You weren't expecting this to come at this time of the year. You weren't expecting me to do something about what Atomas calls the satellite channel. So anyway, I was supposed to do this last year, November, December. A number of adversities, including my surface losing its functioning keyboard and my personal sanity, have delayed numerous times, more than those that took to launch the bloody channel in the first place. Then, I was supposed to do this on the 25th anniversary, because 5 times 5. That's how important the channel is. Yeah, I made that last bit up, but there's still time to spare before the channel turns 23. The channel is actually nearly 11 months older than I am. It's 6 o'clock on Sunday, March the 30th, and this is 5. Channel 5 launched on Easter Sunday, 1997, the 30th of March, with five candy stripes and a unique logo made by Wolf Follins. Channel 5 hoped that the candy stripes would join the Nike swoosh, the Golden Arches at McDonald's, the BBC Two numeral and the Adidas stripes. All in all, accompanied by the Spice Girls, because there were five back then, as well as a meagre terrestrial coverage, and the selection of programmes that tried too hard to be unlike the BBC's two channels, ITV and Channel 4. Plus had news updates every hour from ITN, and inspired by Canada's City TV, back then owned by Moses Neimer. Apple Marx didn't even get the channel until he got on digital that turned the millennium. Besides, even small RSL local terrestrial channels like Portsmouth TV were presumably clogging up frequencies where Channel 5 should have been. The end of analog signals that something Channel 4 did in Wales, finally getting its universal coverage. The initial identity for the channel was, in truth the dog notwithstanding, unlike any other channel in the UK at the time. Not terrestrial, not even satellite. They managed to out-channel for their package by creating items that were viewed more as a art form rather than means of identifying the channel, making them feel less authoritative and more stylish. And this came from the channel secretly built on the notion of the three Fs, films, football and fornication. For Christmas, a set of Christmas items was commissioned inspired by the average package, but with added Christmas lights. In 1998, they just flat repeated it, but with a change. They just added extra sparkles so that they weren't telling you that they were repeats. This sort of thing isn't even new. The BBC did that in the first few years of broadcasting, because making new props was expensive. For Channel 5, it was a sign of delaying the inevitable. In March 1999, Channel 5 made its first rebrand, adopting a predominantly white look featuring both the celebrities and the colours of the channel. Foreshadowing ITV1 by three and a half years, except the Channel 5 approach was a lot more creative. For Christmas, instead of using celebrities, Channel 5 decided to use the theme of a factory, presumably using celebrities as actors for Santas, angels and elves. The look was rejigged in March 2000, giving less prominence to the logo, which apparently looked taller than the faux celebrities Channel 5 had tried to cultivate. For Christmas, the star was Santa Claus, seen here trying to make comic pratfalls for the benefit of the viewing audience. A change from the usual was made evident in 2001. That year's items were the first to break the conventions of the normal look. A practice the BBC mastered, and stopped mastering since BBC One adopted the balloon for about 35 years at the time. And ITV One was doing the same. The look was inspired by films from like 60 to 80 years before, with looks somewhat reminiscent of the oddball A Trip to the Moon look that BBC Two had adopted before a decade prior. With the five being represented by a star, who in reality superimposes what looks like a woman's face, presumably inspired by the face in the sun of the Teletubbies, a show that 
were still high on reruns on BBC channels back then. Because Christmas is for the family, see? They just want those boring old family movies of the holiday period. I'd be boring and sad with these Our remarks. second film this afternoon Even is a romantic drama about a portrait artist who falls in love with a disfigured recluse she's commissioned to paint. Beauty is at 10 to 3. 2002 led to two new looks. Two one in March, never got to see Christmas, and one in October. Before we get to the later to one, the quick note about the old one. At this was probably right an attempt to, to delay the inevitable, aka rebrand the channel, as there were no celebrities seen on screen. This look eventually foreshadowed what ITV1's generic items were going to be in the 2002 and 2003 celebrity rebrands. By generic, understand as pre-news, because nobody wants to see Adams in deck, introducing yet another half hour of further evidence of the coming apocalypse, there isn't, and reports about five men being shot in the wounds. The worst was yet to come, as 2002 was the Annus Horribilis of British television idents. The even channels, that is BBC Two and Channel Four, still had stable idents, one involving the numerals some sort of anthropomorphic mascot for the channel, and the other involving a square and a number of backdrops. Turn over to the odd channels, and first you get BBC One adopting dancers, with the only integrated symbol being dancers in red, and that. Fast forward to the autumn, BBC One's arch nemesis adopts a look similar to that of Channel 5's a few years earlier, except instead of having a creative backdrop, they just used a banal studio for that purpose. That was in late October, after the clocks went back. Channel 5 joined in the middle of September. In came a new lowercase word mark, and they said a fidance that was worse than Love BBC One and ITV One combined. The audience just foreshadowed BBC One's oneness. People doing mundane things in mundane scenarios, and the five word mark just appears in an uninspiring way, reminiscent of video editors that were starting to appear at the time. Half an hour. First things that. Even some of the items had licensed chart tracks, like now Dreams by the Now Deceased, Richard Miles, and tonight, the I'm Never Gonna Give You an Up, of by the often mistaken for being American British legend that is Rick Astley, aka the inventor of the Rickroll. Mind you, this is the same channel that five years earlier said that they thought that the five candy stripes were to join the big names of belonging to a brand. Like a television equipment, the Nike swoosh. Tomorrow it just nine, doesn't make any sense. It's the same as and CBS announcing it would retire the eye sometime in the 1960s, or NBC changing the peacock to something worse. Worse might be a traditional drawing of the peacock, as the one seen here for Pakistan television. Also, the official excuse was that the rebrand was to concentrate on five being a brand. Channel 5 is just a name, and the people were going to watch the damn thing in the first place. That's what took them so long to arrive to the multi-channel game, with 5 Life and 5 US in 2006. Though initially it was supposed to be 5.2 and 5.3. As I said, was the Annus Horribilis of the British Islands, so let's compare what the odd channels were doing that year for Christmas. BBC One's dancers were replaced by human snowflakes. ITV1 was the default loser with sparkles added to the excellent items. What about five? School play. Honestly, that just about fits in with what the channel was doing, and that just shows. Honestly, ITV1 lost that Christmas by default. Not even the announcers were safe. They were introducing or promoting shows with some violence while introducing images of innocent children. Also mind, Channel 5 never had a clock because they were already born in the age of 24-7 television. Channel 5 never did overnight close downs in its life. Meanwhile, the BBC had dropped the clocks and thought it was a good idea to use less jolly versions of its Christmas sidents to go before the news. What I said about the announcers would be the same as this. 
In 25 minutes, lots of blood and carnage as S4C premieres Fist of Knuckles 21. But first, it's time for the snowman, with a rather unsuspecting visit. 2003 for 5 was basically a big budget production, foreshadowing the John Lewisization of British commercials and Christmas, and indeed BBC One, as a Christmas sign in for this year was based upon an entire promo featuring Driving Home for Christmas as its soundtrack. Unsurprisingly enough, one of the items has a red word mark instead. The items were basically just bits from the promo. Another thing they foreshadowed was the concept, the birth of Jesus set in the contemporary age, i.e. 2003, with England acting as Bethlehem. Two years later, as we'll see, did the same, but set in Cardiff. Complementing the excellent package was a set of items with wintry themes, both of which were seen the weeks after Christmas, apart from the variation of the roller skating one, that had a Christmas tree with lights in it. Five rebranded again in November of 2004. They were trying to keep their image afloat, hence their constant rebrands, more so than ITV1. This time the items were now about the impossible. Doing average things in TV items is like possible. However, at Christmas, you need a break. This time the item was about the five being created as an ice culture in a package of three items. Such package was repeated in 2005, presumably because they were wasting budget on the channel's next rebrand. And wouldn't you know it, all the channels that rebranded within the same year that five did its major rebrand were rebranding again. This time it was the opposite order. ITV1, a very good morning five, and a warm welcome BBC to a new look for BBC One. Five rebranded just weeks after Christmas, and about a week or two after ITV1, with the new look arriving on the 23rd of January, the same day as the network television premiere of Prison Break. There is a package of eight items, and no five in it. This makes it the least authoritative look the channel has ever got to date. Channel 5 ends in second place because even then, the blocks only appeared in the correct position for like a nanosecond. 5 just went too far. The items had four letter words inspired by feelings. Now, failure isn't a four letter word, technically, fail is, but back in the day, there was an entire concept of emotional marketing that was all the rage. Even ITV1's rebrand, that barely lasts a year, since on this kind of thing. ITV's rebrand didn't last long and got changed by November for something a little more creative, but still dull. Five did survive Christmas and indeed decided to centre the items on the word give, with items promoting charities. Once this campaign was over, Five reject now, their items yet again so that they would just feature the channel's logo. You weren't expecting the item to be a repeat, but no, it wasn't. For Christmas 2007, they were inspired by BBC Two's efforts of the same year, but taking the other way around, making it look more like a fever dream. Well, a Christmassy romantic drama like for your Monday movie, afternoon on five with our first movie, A Chance of Snow, at 1.40. But now we're cooking the books with On the 6th Jeremy of October Edwards. 2008, five rebranded, dropping the old word mark after six years in favour of a circle and an uppercase word mark. The new look was designed by Dixon Baxi with further work made by other companies worldwide as it comes just in KBO Australia. The items focused less on the logo and more on the impossible. Most notably, the first item to go live on air in this look involved a fight a between invisible children. Volunteers are pushed to the absolute limit. Are they unbreakable? 